All right. Lesson number two, and we're studying the first uh, few less lessons is on Abraham. And today, the title of our lesson is God's Covenant with Abraham. Abraham. Uh, as I was studying this lesson, and, and I know you all studied the first part um, la yesterday when God called Abraham, and I don't know if, if it was brought out uh, exactly word for word like I'm going to bring it out, but you know, God did not call Abraham because Abraham was uh, a, a God preferred Abraham, you know. He didn't call him because of that. He was a willing vessel. He was a willing vessel, and, you know, God called him. Did God call some other people, and they didn't, they didn't accept it? Well, we don't know about, you know, we don't know whether that happened. Really? Okay. <laughs> but Abraham was a willing vessel, you know, to, and when God called him, Abraham listened. Abraham realized this is God talking. And you know, and as, as he left uh, the land and came to uh, 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 the different places that he came, I think he uh, uh, was north of Cana there for a while, uh, Haran, ha Haran, I think is what the name of it was. And you know, uh, that wasn't where God wanted him. They brought him there, but you know that wasn't exactly what God's full intent was. And then we're, you know, we study about how he went on down, or we will study about how he went on down into Cana then. But, but God's covenant with Abraham. Why did God make a covenant with just Abraham? It wasn't it, it wasn't a respect of person, but it was because of what Abraham Abraham listening. God making a covenant with him, Abraham listening, Abraham believing. Now, you know, yes, Abraham made some mistakes. Sarah made some mistakes. You know, they when the when the baby was promised, well, you know, the Sarah laughed and and Abraham wasn't too sure about it. And and then when uh, uh, he had uh, Ishmael with uh, Hagar, which was not the promised son. You know, there were some mistakes made, but you know, Abraham believed in God. He always kept his eyes on God and, and, and did what God wanted him to do here. And so uh, I, I, I kind of wanted to bring that out. That it wasn't that, that Abraham was a rich man, and so God decided to, get, to take him. Or that he was a certain colored skin or something. And or he come from a certain family or something. It wasn't that. It was because he he answered the call of God. God gives us a call. We can be an Abraham also. All we got to do is listen to the call of God, uh, respond to the call of God, obey the call of God, and follow after the call of God. And we can we can be in the same same position there. Okay, God's covenant with Abraham. The memory verse is uh, Galatians 3 and 9. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. I'm going to talk about that a little later on if, if time permits there. I'm going to read uh, uh, an emphasis. It's going to be the junior emphasis there. Uh, God made a covenant with Abraham. The covenant was to last forever. You know that's that's what that's that was that was something right there. God promised to be a God to Abraham and his children. Now I want you to file that away in your in your memory bank. God promised to be a God. God promised to be the God to Abraham, and not only to him but also to his children. And so uh, uh, we're going as we read through our lesson today. I'm going to try and point out the time that, that, that God told him that then. Now, if we have faith in God, we too are children of Abraham. Abraham and his sons were to be circumcised. Our circumcision is a putting off of sin 
in our hearts. And that's, that's, what, that's how we can become a spiritual Abraham child. That's, that's, that's what he's talking about. We're not, we're, I'm, not, I'm not blood related to, to Abraham. There's no blood relation of me and Abraham. Uh, if we go back in, in the family tree, uh, I don't think I'd ever cross paths with Abraham, you know. But, you know, we can be the children of Abraham through Jesus Christ. And that's what's most important. Our circumcision is putting off a of sin in our heart. God's covenant with Abraham included the promise to send Jesus Christ. And, and you know... Can you imagine how miraculous, miraculous that would be uh, uh, for Abraham? Abraham understood it to a point, but I don't think he understood the whole point. Uh, uh, you know, he he uh, he might have thought, okay, you know, there's going to as, as we read our lesson, uh, there's going to be king, there's going to be nations come out of you, there's going to be kings come out of you. And, you know, different things like that. Well, you know, that's probably what he is thinking. Nations, you know, uh, what nations there was. Kings, probably thinking about earthly kings. Probably didn't think about King Jesus at all. But, you know, that was one of the promises that, uh, that God made to him. Why? Why did, he, why did he do that? It sounds to me like it was because Abraham was faithful. It was because Abraham being faithful. And we're in the same boat. All we got to do is be faithful to God, and God can, God can bless us. God has blessed us, will bless us, and will continue to bless us if we follow him. Oh, yes, we're going to run into trials. Abraham ran into trials. I think he had to fight some kings, you know, one time. I think uh, uh, some of his family was taken captive, wasn't they? He had to go get them. You know, yes, there was trials there. But you know, one thing about it, I think he went before the Lord before he went out and stepped out on his own. Well, look at us. What do we got to do? Go before the Lord before we step out and, and do something stupid, you know? And, and that's what lots of times happens if we go out on our own. We do something stupid and, uh, and, uh, and all. But as long as we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus... And I've said that time and time again. As I've been up here teaching, keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Stay, stay close to him. Hang on to his hand. <laughs> be as close as you can. You know, you have to be pretty close to somebody to hold hands with them, you know. You know, well, hold hands with Jesus and you won't fail. All right, we'll get started here. Uh, Genesis 17, 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine. Think of that. That's just one year away from 100. The Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. I'm going to go ahead and read uh, verse 3 too. And Abraham fell on his face... And God talked with him, saying, and I'm going to stop right there, Dan. The covenant between God and Abraham. When Abraham was 99 years old, he lived to be 175. That's how old, that's how old Abraham wound up uh, living to. So this was 70, 76 years before his death. But think of it, as 99 years old. You know, he was an old man, you know. God appeared to Abraham. I, you know, God can appear to us. I'm 66 years old, and to a lot of people, that's pretty old. But, you know, God can appear to me. God has a job for me to do. My mother-in-law is 88 years old. Okay, that may seem maybe old to us, you know, too. But, you know, God has a purpose for her, too. You know, no matter, Abraham's 99 years old. God had a purpose for him. You know, never, if, if we're still breathing on this earth, God has a purpose for us. God has a purpose for us. The Lord appeared to Abraham. I am the Almighty God. This is what God said. Because of who He is, He should be heard and obeyed. And that's not just Abraham's responsibility, but that's also our responsibility. You know, 
who God is. Who is God? He's the creator of the universe. You know, who has more uh, 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 who are we to fo- uh, follow, you know? Well, the God of the universe, you know. That's, that's, that's who made us. That's who created us. That's who created, that's who we were created for. You know, uh, um, uh, there was a song, uh, I, was, I was born to serve God's will, you know. I was made in his likeness created in his image you know we are we're, we're we were born to serve god that's 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 our purpose and you know there's many people that that took that took that uh uh, uh you might say declaration and throw it away you know and went and went their own way well i was in that group at one time too but you know the, the, after all that takes place then we're born to serve serve God that's that's that and this is what because of who he is he should be heard and obeyed you know some people hear but they don't obey but you know it's very important that we hear and we obey and we obey you know if we if we hear uh our parents when when we were children if we hear our parents saying well you know hey I got this chore I want you to do I want you to have it done in an hour. Okay, we heard that. Now it's up to us to obey that. You know, two hours later, they come back, and there's going to be a punishment to to pay for, you know. There's going to be consequences, you know, uh, because it's not done. And so that's the same way it is here. You know, God gives us a job. God expects us to do it. Hear and obey. Be thou perfect. This, that's, that's his uh, 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 warning to us. That was the last three or four words in verse 1 there, Genesis 17, 1. <coughs> Excuse me. Be thou perfect. Some people think we cannot be perfect. However, God requires perfection. Not that we can know everything. Not that we can do everything everything not that we never make a mistake no uh uh-uh no it's not that it is that we must have a perfect heart perfectly true perfect in love perfect in what we wish to do which is God's will I will make my covenant that's what he that's what he told uh, uh, Abraham God had made promises to Abraham before. Now it was to be a covenant. Abram's part was that he be perfect. He be perfect. You know, uh, uh, there are several, several men that was mentioned in the Bible, and they said he was perfect before God. I think Enoch was one of them. I think Noah was another one. Uh, uh, Job was another one, uh, uh, and Abraham can be included in that. But you know, you know, they lived according to what God told them, and had the awe of God with them, so that they could do that and reverence God because of that. And that's what God expects of us. God had made promises to Abram before. Now it was time to be a, have a covenant. Abram's part that he'd be perfect. God's part, and God has a part in that too. God's part was to multiply him, give him many children. And that's what, that's what God promised him. You know, that's what God promised him. 99 years old, and I'm going to have a child, you know. Uh, that don't sound quite right, you know. But, you know, what does that verse in the Bible say? With God, all things are possible. You know, and you take, you take him being 99. I think Sarah was about 90 at that time. 90 years old. See, that's two years older than what my mother-in-law is, you know. Going to have a baby, you know. Well, we'll I, that's probably a, a later lesson. But, you know, Abraham didn't waver, though. He, 
He might have, might have thought about it, but he didn't waver in that. Let's go on to verse 3 there. Oh, well, uh, uh, and, uh, well, I've already read that. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As God spoke, Abram fell on his face in submission, in humility, in respect, in reverence, in awe, and in worship. You know, you know that, was, that was what Abram, that's how he wanted to treat his God. You know, there were, I, I mentioned several things there. Submission, you know, that's very important. Humility, that's very important before God. You know, you, you, know, you, see, you see some football players, you know, and they, they call it swagger. Uh, is what they call it, but you know, I kind of call, call, call it pride or, or big-headedness, whatever you want to add to it, you know, but they try to put a little, little smoother finish on it by saying swagger, you know, and all. You know, you don't come before God with swagger. You come before God with humility. That's what you come. Respect, that's another one. Reverence is another one, you know. You know, who deserves more reverence than God? You know, he's the, like I said, he's the creator of the universe. In awe, you know, or fear, you know, we, we might say fear, fear of the Lord, you know. Well, this is a better word because we understand in awe because, you know, in, in the English language, fear can mean awe or it can be afraid of, you know. And, and no, we, 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 we should not be afraid of God. We uh, now I know that John the Baptist, when he seen Jesus on the Isle of Patmos, you know, he fell down in fear, you know. And yeah, we might fall down in fear, not knowing what's going on. But you know, when he realized who it was, you know, he stood there just like Abraham did: reverence, submission, re uh, um, respect, and worship. And you know, I think I think John even mentions that worship in the in the Revelation there. And then God talked to him. You know, when God spoke, when God spoke, probably said, Abraham, and oh, you know, it, 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 you know, he realized. And then God was able to talk to him there. There was more God spoke on. Abraham listened intently. Let's go on and, and see what God said then in verse 4 there. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. This is God talking to Abraham. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. At 99 years old, you know, that probably entered uh, uh, Abraham's uh, uh, mind when he, when he said that. At 99 years old, okay, Lord, I don't know how it's going to happen, but okay, I understand that, that you're, you're making this covenant and what you say happens you know that's kind of what we got to take because sometimes you know God may tell us something and it just seems like it's impossible but you know we can do just like Abraham Abraham uh, and tell God God I don't know how it's going to happen but it's in your control use me if I if you can use me anyway use me and and I'll try and follow and try and do what you want me to do then and that's you know that's 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 what we got to do and it goes on and says, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. At 99 years old, you know, he could bring that up again. And I will make nations of these, and kings shall come out of thee. Kings. Okay, you know, King Saul, King David, King, you know. And he probably is thinking thinking earthly kings. But you know, God even had more than that in his mind there. We'll, we'll get to that. God promised that Abram would be father of many nations. For this reason, his name was changed to Abraham. The greatest of these nations was Israel and the Jewish people there. Kings shall come out of thee. There were many kings but the greatest is Jesus, born many years after. God always keeps his promise. You know, God didn't say he would fulfill that tomorrow. 
or next year or a hundred years from now or 500 years from now, he said he would fulfill it. And as it come, it was in God's time. And so, you know, 500 years from now, why Abraham was already dead and gone. But you know, people always looked back to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, our fathers, what they always said, you know. And so God kept his promise. When we keep, up, when we keep the promise that we make to God, follow after him, God always will keep his promise to us. Whatever he promises us, it's going to take place. And it'll be in his time. We can't say, oh, God, you promised me. How come it's not happened? You know, you know, you, you promised me. Well, it's not time yet. You know, that's all God's got to say. You know, my parents would promise us something. And, you know, maybe they didn't put a time that it was going to happen. And we would might think, uh, I wonder if they forgot. You know, we talk, I talk to my sisters. You, you reckon they've forgotten, you know, to fulfill that promise? And, uh, and then you go to ask. And a lot of times that aggravates them, you know. And it delays it sometimes even, you know. And so, you know, when God promises, we can be guaranteed that God will not forget. He will never forget. It may take a while. It, to us, it may take, it seem like it take forever. Well, that's the way it was when we was at home and the promise to be made. Sometimes it seemed like it took forever. But you know, it's always worth waiting for. And when God promises something, it's always worth waiting for. Genesis 17, 7. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in, thy, in, in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be, and I want you to catch this, a God and to thee and to thy children after thee, to be a God to him. Now that's, that's not the only place it says it. <coughs> I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein... Thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. I will be their God. There he says it again. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee, every man child among you, shall be circumcised. <coughs> Excuse me. God wants to be our God. Are we going to allow Him to be our God? That's what, that's what Abraham, that's what God told Abraham. Abraham, if you will follow me, if you'll follow my uh, uh, directions in the way I want you to go, I'll be your God. I won't only be your God, but I'll be your children's gods too. I'll, I'll be your children's God also. And so, you know, because Abraham had faith in God, it's not because God plucked him out and said, oh, he's something special. I want you to get that. It's not that. But he was something special because he followed God. And that's the reason why. We can be that special person too. All we got to do is follow God. All we got to do. Covenant between God and Abraham's children. God had more to say. I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed. It'll, it'll even go further than just between me and you is what God's saying. God includes Abraham's children in the covenant. His children's are the Israelites, or the Jews. For an everlasting covenant, that's what it says in the, in the uh, uh, verses there, for an everlasting covenant, it is never to end. And then he goes on and said, I will be their God. Did you catch that? I tried to note it out to you. I will be their God, the children's God there too. That was God's part. He would be all the good things God to his children. He, let me read that. He would be all the good things God is to his people. And that's, you know, 
God can only give good things. God can only give good things. And you know, in order to receive them good things, we have to follow. It's just like, just like this covenant that, that Abraham followed. Well, we had the Bible. We had the Word of God to follow. And you know, we can, we can uh, use that as our covenant, the Word of God. That's, that's all God wants us to do is follow the Word of God. And you know, He, he supplies us with everything that we need. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. That was the people's part. God promised three th- things. Number one, many nations as descendants. That was in verse 4. If you'll go back up and look, uh, we read that earlier there, but that was in verse 4. He'd be many, many nations as descendants. Number two, to be God to him and his children. That was found in verse 7. To be God to you and to your children. That's what he's talking about. And then the third thing was give Cana to him and his seed. That was in verse 8 there. We must, we, we, talking about us and you, you know. We must keep his commandments also. Covenant, you can call it commandments, you can call it covenant, you can call it statutes, you can call it his word. But when God speaks, we better follow. That's, that's, that's the whole important thing in the Christian life is we follow after him and be what God wants us to be and he will be our God too. Galatians 3 and 7. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. I'm going to read the adult commentator there. They which are of faith. Those who believe God. Now he's talking about us. He's talking about us. This is the new... Uh, New Testament, Galatians 3 and 7. Is that right? Yeah, Galatians 3 and 7. Those who believe in God, who put, and and I like the way the, the commentator said, full trust in God. Full trust. Not partial trust. You know, there's a lot of people that, that uh, well, especially on their obituary, oh yeah, they was they was good people, you know. Well... You know, you kind of know how they lived, you know, and, well, okay, that's between them and God, you know. But, you know, put full trust in Him. The same are the children of Abraham. It is an everlasting covenant to thy seed after thee. Who are the seed? Not those related in the flesh, but those related in the Spirit. That's, that's, that's what is more important than anything. The children of Abraham now are those saved from sin by faith in Jesus Christ. Saved from sin by faith (coughs) in Jesus Christ. Following and doing the will of God. That's, That's what's more important than anything there. We can go on then to verse 8. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. And I'm going to read the adult uh, commentary again. This salvation through Christ, this gospel, was preached before unto Abraham. God referred to the gospel of Christ when he said, To thee shall all nations be blessed. <clears throat> now, do you think Abraham understood all that? I, I don't think so. You know, it says, um, I think it's in uh, Hebrews. <coughs> Excuse me. In Hebrews, you know, he looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. He never did get to see that city. You know, he never got to see it completely. But he looked for it and he knew that the promise was going to come, maybe not in his lifetime, and it wasn't in his lifetime, 
but he was always faithful in believing what God had for him there. God referred to the gospel of Christ when he said, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Do you see how these Old Testament promises applies to us today? God keeps his word. And you know, we, uh, we today, uh, you know, we talk about, talk about the things uh, that, uh, that God expected of Abraham. You know, what God's told Abraham, he expected Abraham to follow. Same way with us. What God tells us, God expects us to, to, to follow. He don't, uh, he don't just uh, uh, tell us things and we say okay and then go do whatever we want to and, and God says, oh, that's okay. Nope, it don't work that way. It don't work that way. Yeah, my dad, you know, whenever he would tell us to do something and, and he'd think we might be ignoring, ignoring him, why he just he just tell us he says well I'm not telling you this just to hear my head rattle, you know he 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 said that several times you know, and you know that's not the way God does either he doesn't he doesn't just say it just to hear his head rattle God has a plan for each and every one of us. Galatians three and fourteen that the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? Now see, this has already been already taken place, but it stems all the way back to Abraham there. That's Paul writing there, and Paul says that the blessing of Abraham, what blessing of Abraham? The covenant that he made with Abraham. That's what he's talking about. Might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. You know what? That verse right there includes me. Talking about Gentiles. That's, that's what I am. I'm a, I was a Gentile. We all are Gentiles. We were, we were all born Gentiles. You know, we wasn't, we wasn't part of Abraham's family. But you know, when Jesus came, he included us all. Thank God he included all of us then. And he didn't just pick out the Jews. Or didn't just pick out uh, one certain nationality. But he, he said he come for all. And you know, for God so loved the world. You know, if it was just for the Jews, he'd say it, for God so loved the Jews. But it doesn't say that. It says the world. And it means everyone. Everyone. The covenant between God and all people, they which are of faith are the children of Abraham. Note this is in the New Testament scripture. When Jesus came, God included in the covenant all people who will have faith. Who will have faith in God. That's what he's talking about. To have part in it, we must believe. Well, we probably first must hear, then believe, and then obey God. You know, we have to hear. You know, in Revelation, uh, reading that, and it says, he that have an ear to hear, hear, you know. He that have an ear, hear, you know. Well, you got to hear it first. But then what do you, you can, you can just let it go in one ear and out the other. You don't want to do that. You want to believe it. And then after you believe it, you want to obey God and uh, follow after him. The circumcision we must have is not on the body, but in the heart. It is to put off sin. In Deuteronomy 30 and 6, uh, it says, And the Lord thy God shall circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. <clears throat> Did you see that? To love the Lord thy God with all your heart. Not just part of it. You don't reserve just a little bit for something else, but you give it all up and all thy soul that thou mayest live. God, God requires all of us. God requires all of each one of us. Let me put it that way. He requires all of each one of us. And you know, that's not a bad thing. God rewards you like you 
can never understand until you become a Christian. God will justify or save the heathen, those who before knew nothing of God through faith. God will justify the heathen through faith. I was bringing out some of that other just to explain what was being said there. <clears throat> God will justify the heathen through faith. God will justify or save the heathen. Those who uh, before knew nothing of God, and he'll do that through faith there. That was what God met when he promised Abraham, to thee shall all nations be blessed. Now, do you think Abraham, I'm going to ask that question again, do you think under, Abraham understood that at that time? No, he took for what it was there, and that happened also. <clears throat> but there was a whole big universe out there that, that Abraham was in this one little section, and, and it took in all of it, you know. And so, so he, uh, it was bigger. It was bigger than bigger than Abraham. It was bigger than Abraham. You know, you you hear people say, "Well, you know, this this football team isn't just one person." You know, well, yeah, they might have a superstar on there, but you know, without without the other people around, you know, how good is it? Well, you know, Abraham might have been the super superstar player, you know, here, but it was bigger than him, me too. And so, so uh, <clears throat> God meant for it to be more than what what Abraham probably could comprehend. Even we'll just put it that way. The blessing come only through Jesus Christ. It is that Jesus saves from sin. Then the Holy Spirit is given to fill the person. That is God part, God's part of the covenant. It all comes through faith. And that's the most important thing. It comes through faith there. <clears throat> Let's go back to the memory verse. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. That's our memory verse there. People of faith. Who are people of faith? People that have faith in God. Christians. People that have faith. Now all people can have the same blessing as Abraham. Even though we're not part of the Abraham family, we can still participate in it. We can become Abraham's family spiritually. And that's by turning our heart and life over to God then. And we can receive the covenant also. <clears throat> yeah, we're not going to inherit no Cana or anything like that, but we're going to inherit a new heaven and a new earth and a new Larry, a new heart, a new... Well, it just, it just gets wonderful. All can be done in the same covenant. It is all one covenant. It has grown according to God's plan. Isn't that wonderful to hear that? It has grown according to God's plan. You know, sometimes we think, man, as wicked as the world is and everything, <coughs> is God still in control? Well, yes, God's still in control. But some things ha happen, and some things are allowed, you know, to either wake us up or, you know, wake somebody up or or one thing and another yes we may have to suffer but you know God's covenant is still there and it still holds true each and every day we go through trials and tribulations we go through hardship we go through maybe beatings and one thing imprisonments or whatever Paul went through that what does he do he says, for I reckon that the suffering of this present world cannot be compared with what I'm going to receive. Or, you know, I didn't quote it word for word, but that's kind of what it meant there. And, you know, I think Peter or somebody, maybe it was Peter, was in prison. They got out and they rejoiced because they suffered with Jesus. And, you know, that's, 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 that's what Christianity will do to you. That's what 
the covenant of God will do to you there. <clears throat> to be in it, this is all one covenant. To be in it, we must have faith in God. That's the first step. Have faith in God. Second step, and serve Him. And third step, obey Him. You know, we serve Him, <clears throat> we obey Him. Them, them two things go pretty much hand in hand, serve and obey. But you know, you can serve for a while and obey, but then you can quit serving or you can quit obeying. And you know, when that happens, well, then then things get gets rough again. Things things aren't the way they they the way God intends for them to be. But have faith in God, serve and obey Him. <clears throat> there can be no more sin in our heart, and God takes care of that there. I'm going to go ahead and read in the points to consider uh, the last one there, the blessing of Abraham. Let us know notice this promise carefully. The same blessing promised to Abraham is for us today. Christ died that we might receive it, the promise of the Spirit. That's what he's talking about. All that is provided for us in this gospel dispensation was included in God's covenant with Abraham. Every bit of it there. Every bit of it. Abraham understood probably very little of it. But you know, he understood what God wanted him to understand. He understood and obeyed what he understood. We have a little more greater light than what Abraham has. A lot greater light than Abraham. But we're required to do that too, is what's very important. That covenant was not limited to the Old Testament law. The law covenant was given later because of man's weakness. Men needed to learn that they cannot be, become righteous in their own efforts and that they must have the cleansing and the power of God. And that's very true. We can't do it on our own. We can't do it on our own. But God's there, the Holy Spirit's there, ready to help us and lead us through what needs to be led through. Note that God's promise to Abraham was given after Noah and the flood and before Moses and the law. And it reaches beyond the law. It includes cleansing from sin through Christ's blood and the coming of the Holy Spirit into the saint's heart. <coughs> Abraham believed the promise but died without receiving its fulfillment. A lot of things were fulfilled in that covenant, but there was a lot of things yet to come. And Abraham didn't see all of it, but his faith did not waver that it would not happen. It never wavered that it would not happen. His faith was imputed to him for righteousness. Imputed. We don't use that word very often, but it means credited. His faith was credited to his, uh, for him for righteousness. The, <clears throat> the fulfillment came with the death of Christ and the coming of the Holy Ghost. And was Christ a descendant of Abraham? He sure was. If you'll go back, it goes all the way back to Judah. Judah was the son of Isaac, Jacob. Judah was the son of, of Jacob. Jacob was the son of Isaac. Isaac was the son of who? Abraham. Went all the way back there. <clears throat> it is the fulfillment came with the death of Christ and the coming of the Holy Ghost it is ours today but many people are missing all or part of it because of not knowing or of not exercising faith in it <coughs> exercise our faith keep it in the forefront of our mind at all times Keep the covenant of God in the forefront of your mind and never waver on what God promises. You'll never be disappointed. Let me put it that way. Let us all believe and receive both the cleansing from sin and the filling of the Spirit. And then, what's the last five words there? Then spread the good news. And you know, that's, that's what God requires of us. Remember, Remember that was one of the last statements that Jesus made on earth. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. 
preach the covenant of Abraham, is what he is saying. <clears throat> we, can, we can put that with it there. Put, re, preach the covenant of Abraham. Preach the gospel. The gospel has come. Uh, we're in a new dispensation of time. Jesus didn't say that word for word like that, but we're in a new dispensation of time, and here it is. It's being fulfilled right now before your eyes there. And I want to thank, thank God for that. And, uh, and uh, God bless each and every one of you.